Hello. It is Tuesday, May 7th. And uh, today we're gonna pump a whole lot of water. Um, noticed it a couple months ago. Had all the important town people out here. Um, no one seems to know where the water's coming from. The running theory is this is just a lot of rainwater that the ground couldn't absorb. Although I've already pumped about 10,000 gallons out from back here, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, I'm not so confident in that theory. Um, the problem is no one wants to do anything about it because the town doesn't want to pay for it. They take the responsibility, then everyone else in the town has to, can have the, uh, the ability to go to the town and say, well, you did it for someone else, and I gotta do it for me. So I get that point. Um, so I watched a lot of YouTube videos about French drains and all sorts of other um, methods of uh, pumping out excess water. Um, I have to say I watched Apple Drains, check out their YouTube channel. Um, really good stuff. Um, so I went with uh, some of their ideas. I'm using a Zoller M53 cast iron submersible pump with a vertical float. And then, um, because this is a temporary solution, and I'll show you my setup in a second, um, I'm pumping down to my neighbor's far corner of his yard where uh, there is a access grate for a storm drain culvert that runs through my backyard. So let me flip this around so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So in the lovely town of Springfield, New Jersey, um, at least uh, where on my street, um, all the homeowners have a 15 foot easement um, that they are not permitted to build any permanent structures on because there is a storm drain culvert that runs from the street way up there, comes all the way down, and runs all the way down the street, the back of everybody's property, and then there's actually a pond um, uh, at the very end, there's probably four or five more double lot houses, and then a little bit of land, and then there's a pond uh, where all the storm, where the culvert basically connects to. And then there's also one in the grate, and we'll walk down in a second, I'll show you. Um, it comes in from a storm access, uh, storm grate in the street that comes down between the yards underground, connects to this main pipe, and then goes down. So this, is what I'm dealing with. Just to give you an idea. Yeah, so. Just yank my foot out so you can see. Yeah, that's how much water is in there. We're, we're, we're probably a good foot. And then my foot sinking probably another six to eight inches into the mud bed. So for now, all I did was um, I use the heavier duty uh, sump, uh, the Liberty Pump uh, sump basin. It's the heavier duty plastic with pre-drilled holes in the side. And the trick I learned when I first tried this and when I first pumped, there you go, that was my, my uh, DIY engineering to take a bigger drill bit and drill bigger holes. The problem with that, and I don't suggest it, although the bucket works, just a five gallon Home Depot bucket. Um, the problem is leaves and stuff get sucked in there real fast because the water flow through the holes is much faster, so it pulls everything. Um, the holes, and you can see here, these are all pre, these were already drilled when I bought this. You see they're much smaller? That's the trick. The water flows a little slower. It doesn't pull all the surrounding leaves and whatever garbage, um, and as you can see, I don't know if you can hear, that pump is super quiet. Um, and literally the only, you know, really expensive piece was the pump. Uh, I got it for about $159 from my plumbing supply place down the street. The basin was about $76 um, because of the heavy duty construction. It's, it's, I could, it's pretty durable. And then the rest of it's just regular um, uh, PVC. Uh, I think they call it, um, 
uh, schedule 40 or something like that um, uh, inch and a inch and a quarter PVC uh, with a one-way valve that was the other thing that um, pretty much everything I read up on the videos everybody said make sure you have a one-way valve in your systems otherwise um, when you shut the pump off all the water flows right back to where you just pumped it out from so this stops any back water um, and then I'm using inch and a quarter um, corrugated tubing um, I've actually got 95 24 hundred and 12 feet it's once you turn the water on it actually stretches out more but I wanted to have excess because and we're gonna walk down there in a second but I want to show you the rest of the water uh, oh, I got my feet on stuck so as you can see this is what I'm dealing with so hopefully and actually I'm technically now not on my property anymore but and just to give you an idea here we go so that's what we're that's what we're dealing with and the other problem is standing water it's getting warm here in New Jersey and the mosquitoes are coming so I really got to get this pumped out because it's actually as you can see it's above the bottom of my privacy fence and there's about three feet of water inside my my usable yard so as you can see it was back here my neighbor's yard and it goes all the way down there even over here there's some so what I'm hoping is this pump I've only had the pump run about uh, 10 or 15 minutes um, I have a feeling it's probably gonna run non-stop for a day or two because I'm pulling the water I'm pumping it out slower I'm not using a higher GPM pump like I did the first time I did this um, I rented a pump it was a 60 GPM pump attached a three quarter inch fire hose that I at the time because I didn't know there was a storm drain down here I pumped it out to the street and the pump I was using didn't have an automatic shutoff valve so I had to manually start and stop it so this is as you can see and this is why I don't really think <laughs> this is rainwater we didn't have that much rain even over here I had the town engineer out here who told me this stuff here is um basically only grows in wetlands so i don't know I, I i may i may try to get my back my my easement designated as a as a wetland protected wetland maybe i'll get some money out of this so far all i've been doing is burning a hole in my pocket so we're going down this in my neighbor's backyard so there's the tubing i just ran it straight along the back in, inside of his easement Nobody really goes back here. It's a hot mess. Okay. And so this pipe goes straight up between the houses and there's actually a storm grate in the street right basically on the side, right next to the entrance to his driveway. And the town did come out. They actually ran a camera from the street down and then they realized there was a storm grate and they, as you can see, yeah, about three inches of dirt. This was, this was buried under dirt and leaves. So once they uncovered it, they, and then they ran it from here all the way up to the other street and verified the pipe wasn't broken. Um, all of my neighbors apparently have some water in their backyard, from the easement, I should say. Um, I obviously have the worst because apparently I'm the lowest point in the system. Um, and because it's not an above ground drainage system, it doesn't need to be graded. The problem is there's not enough access into the pipe. It's a, apparently it's a cement, it's a solid cement pipe. It's not perforated. Um, so it's not going to absorb the groundwater because that would make too much sense. Unlike the field over here or right behind my house is a middle school. And as you can see, really fancy, nice new field that they put underground drainage in because this is an artificial field, um, which is, if you may or may not know, uh, they typically bury perforated piping and then they cover it with gravel and then they put the field on top of it. And as the water drains straight down, the gravel slows the flow of water down and then the perforated pipe picks up the water in the ground 
and carries it away, which according to them, again, there's a brand new drain pipe just for the field, goes straight down to the end where that pond is. Interestingly enough, the county owns that park where that pond is, and over a year ago, they had to dredge it because there was massive flooding issues. So they apparently completed that work about a year ago, and then I started having issues with this. And I only noticed it um, once the water actually crept underneath my, my six-foot privacy fence, because I obviously don't go back here because it's disgusting. Um, and I noticed it, and then when I looked, I opened the gate and looked behind the fence is when I noticed the massive amount of flooding going on back there, but it was still, we were still in the tail end of the winter and I wasn't about to go dredging through a lake, for, uh, you know, of ice cold water. Uh, so I had to wait till, the, till it warmed up a little bit and then gave it a whirl. Um, and I was successful at first using the original, the pump I rented. Um, like I said, over the course of three days, approximately eight hours a day, um, 60 GPM pump, you can do the math. I pumped a lot of water out. And as I, and after I pumped all the, 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 the water on, on the above ground, and I turned the pump off, and then I stood there and I watched, the water came right up out of the ground, and the entire little lake I had that I had just pumped out came back in probably about 30 minutes. And I did that about four or five times. So that's why I don't believe this is just rainwater. Um, my feeling is there's something around here that is feeding this. I don't know what it is. Nobody can answer it. Um, it's a mystery. But um, so far, so good. Um, the, like I said, the pump's been running about two, probably about 20 minutes now. Um, and I'm just, it's a temporary solution. Um, only because, I'm, like I said, I'm worried about the, uh, the mosquitoes with the standing water. Um, I've lived here three years. This is the first time I've ever seen this. So um, I don't know if this is going to return. So that's why I haven't done the permanent solution, which is to basically drudge a trench, lay down larger um, perforated piping, um, a more heavy duty system underground, you know, digging trenches and all that. I want to I'm hoping this is just a this is a one-time fluke from the we had a large apparently November this November of 2018 was the wettest month on record for uh, for this area so hopefully it's just that but if not and this returns or if the water doesn't actually go away they want to wait a month or two and see if the sun the warmer weather speeds up the evaporation of all that water if it doesn't go away then they admit then there's probably something else feeding this in which case they're going to kind of be forced to get involved because as i said there's a a town owned storm drain pipe underneath my easement which is why i can't build anything is so they can have access to the ground if they had to dig up a broken pipe or fix something but then they're but then they're responsible for replacing or fixing anything that they that they dig the ground up, all of that, that's on them. But for now, I'm stuck with it, which is fine. Um, uh, this solution cost me about $320 with the pump, the basin, all the PVC, the tubing, the connectors, you know, all the little bits and pieces, um, uh, which is not bad. Um, and as I showed you, so the water was flowing out of that inch and a quarter pipe uh, pretty good um, so I'll just keep an eye on it hopefully I can drain a lot of this uh, water out and keep it out but um, I'll I'll make another video once once we get closer to uh, or I get all this water out so you can kind of see what the ground back here looks like all right thanks so much and don't forget um, check out Apple drains YouTube channel um, I'll put a link in the uh, video description uh, they were really excellent excellent uh, source of information for me um, plus my local plumbing supply guy with uh, some of the putting the system together so thanks guys take care